our next uh, our next uh, presenter is uh, is Chad Harbach, who uh, was uh, an out of work editor with an unpaid position at a literary journal and an unpublished novel, 475 pages centering on baseball in a fictional Wisconsin college. This uh, nine years in the writing, uh, Chad's novel called The Art of Fielding uh, explores relationships between friends, family, lovers, and the unpredictable forces that complicate them. Uh, I just finished the book. Chad's going to read a little bit, and then we'll discuss. Terrific, terrific. Chad Harbach, please. Yeah, I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs from the very beginning of the book. Um, and this, uh, this first chapter, it takes place in Peoria at a, uh, at a summer tournament. And there are, uh, so there's, it's a, you know, and it's one of those 110 degree August Midwestern days. Uh, and they've been, they've been playing all weekend. And the, the catcher from one of these teams is slumped down by the backstop, uh, you know, just dead tired after, after playing so many games. And all of a sudden, this little scrawny shortstop from one of the other teams uh, jogs back out to take some some extra fielding practice uh, at the end of the weekend, and uh, and this catcher Mike Schwartz is is just mesmerized by this. The kid glided in front of the first grounder, accepted the ball into his glove with a lazy grace, pivoted and threw to first. Though his motion was languid, the ball seemed to explode off his fingertips to gather speed as it crossed the diamond. It smacked the pocket of the first baseman's glove with the sound of a gun going off. The coach hit another, a bit harder. Same easy grace, same gunshot report. Schwartz, intrigued, sat up a little. The first baseman caught each throw at sternum height, never needing to move his glove, and dropped the balls into the plastic bucket at his feet. After each throw, he dropped back into his feline crouch, the fingertips of his small glove scraping the cooked earth. He barehanded a slow roller and fired to first on a dead run. He leaped high to snag a tailing line drive. Sweat poured down his cheeks as he sliced through the soup-thick air. Even at full speed, his face looked bland, almost bored, like that of a virtuoso practicing scales. He weighed a buck and a quarter maximum. Where the kid's thoughts were, whether he was having any thoughts at all behind that blank look, Schwartz couldn't say. He remembered a line from his poetry class, expressionless expresses God. Thank you. Uh, that was, uh, uh, Chad uh, graciously signed that copy. I just finished the book and I still think about it and I'm so excited to be able to have a little Q&A with Chad. Um, they're the characters that he describes and, and develop in this game, in this book are terrific. Uh, I still think about them. And, and, I, and the, as a baseball player and a, and a, and a fan of the game, the, the feeling and emotion that comes in and around this game, it's, it's really quite incredible and it's a must read, a definite must read. Um, the book is, is set in a small town in Wisconsin, a small college in Wisconsin. It's a Division III baseball school. Uh, I'm curious as to what, how'd you get this uh, idea, thought to be around baseball? You're a baseball fan. I'm a, I'm a huge baseball fan, and you were, you know, you were talking about people's first games before, and I was remembering uh, my first game, and I'm from, uh, I'm from Wisconsin, and so this was, uh, this was a, a Brewers game at County Stadium in 1982, and I was six years old, and uh, I was really excited. I, you know, the Brewers were good, and I knew the lineup up and down, and uh, so I was, I was sitting over on the first base side, and uh, I, was, you know, I was cheering for everybody, and Cecil Cooper came up, and I, got, I was getting into it, and I would, Coop, Coop, Coop. And, there, and I was there with my dad, and there were these two women sitting right behind us. And uh, one of them turns to the other one and says, if that kid's booing the Brewers, I'm going to smack him. <laughs> uh, geez, uh, he was a great player. And, and that shows you the, the, uh, the tenacity of baseball fans. So what brought about the, uh, you know, the concept of, of this book around baseball? Yeah, well, you know, I, I uh, well, you know, it started with the, uh, you know, so the, the shortstop who I just described, Henry, um, you know, he's this, this just incredibly gifted kid. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to give too much away, but, uh, you know, as the book goes on, he, uh, he undergoes this kind of, this kind of crisis 
where he, uh, you know, he, he develops this kind of block that prevents him from, from throwing the ball, you know? What, what a lot of baseball fans know is Steve Blast disease, but I don't like to call it that because it seems awfully, uh, awfully rough on Mr. Blast yeah, to... Uh, <laughs> so, so that dynamic of witnessing that as a fan intrigued you? Yeah, well, it just seemed, I mean, I, I, I mean, I witnessed it as a fan, and, you know, I, I, uh, I started this book about 10 years ago, and there were a few very prominent players who it was happening to around that time. You know, and, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a really amazing and terrible thing to witness as a fan because you get to see a kind of really kind of naked emotion out of these great players that you don't, that you don't always get to see as a fan, and you don't, and you don't really want to see it when it's, when it's, uh, when it's that when it's that rough, you know? Yeah. Um, but also, you know, but it also, I think it just, uh, it spoke to me not only as a baseball fan, but as something that everybody goes through and that I was going through as a, as a, as a young writer, mm -hmm. because it just, you know, it's because it's just all about, you know, just kind of self doubt and, you know, and kind of fearing that you're not going to continue to be able to do this thing that you've always done, mm -hmm. you know? So that, I think, uh, and so it, it, it seemed, like I could use baseball to talk about a lot of different things. Well, you did a good job. And, and along that line, I, I, I did a little research. Um, and you were you talk about Chuck Knobloch and, you know, the, the, the freezing and Mackie Sasser, Rick Ankeel, Steve Blast. There's been numerous players who have had throwing issues. And I get calls all the time. How do you fix that? And mm -hmm. uh, and that's the that's the million dollar question. But this is a quote uh, from Chad that I found off the internet um, uh, it's a good one <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous <laughs> uh, he said it's rare that you see an athlete's consciousness exposed like that meaning a player being double clutching and freezing and just the wheels are turning in his head um, the players wheels are turning in his head the reason that athletes are so boring in interviews is because it doesn't really behoove them to show what's going on in their minds so when that kid, when that kind of uh, naturally comes out, I think it can be very moving and weird. You could just see the wheels turning in his head when he would have to make that throw. I think it's rare that you see an athlete's consciousness exposed like that. That's the reason why they're so, so athletes are so boring. And I think you're right. I think that there's a cover. Uh, did you say that? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's a cover, that exposure of, of literally being out on the field frozen and I can't do it and having everybody see you. It's really difficult. Um, and I'm, we're not quite sure the reason why that happens, but it's certainly a, a part of, uh, it's a sad thing to witness and you do a great job of bringing that out. What, you, you talk a lot about feeling obviously and, and your character as a shortstop is a tremendous fielder. Uh, were there any people that you, growing up, that you admired and, and kind of took that, their uh, skill level in your description of the shortstop? Uh, yeah, well, we were we were talking about this earlier. And you know, even though even though I was a Brewers fan, and so my earliest memories were of you know losing to the Cardinals in the World Series. Um, you know, nonetheless, uh, Ozzie Smith was always my favorite player when I was a kid. And, you know, and there was just a I mean, I think there's just a sort of poetry and ballet to the way that he played the field that I don't know if I've, I don't know if, I don't know if I've ever seen it again from anybody else. Yeah. Okay, well, great. Uh, you guys, it's a, you all should get this book. Uh, it's a terrific read. Uh, Chad's been on the book tour. He came up from Virginia just to, to be here today and he's off again. Actually going to the Brewers Cardinals game tonight. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow. So, uh, so we wish the brew as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bob. <laughs>